Hey everyone, this is Matt Perez, and welcome to video 10 in our SOLIDWORKS API Project Tracker series. Now at this point in time, we have created all of our user forms, but we still need to go back and write all the code in the background that helps us interact with these and takes care of the functions and what things do and, and how things work. So we're still not to the point where we're going to be accessing Microsoft Excel. I still want to leave that to last because we want to make sure that we have the functionality we need and that everything's working here before we worry about saving to an external file because that's probably going to be the most difficult portion of this in terms of the functionality and getting things to lock up and getting things wrong. So at this point in time, if we look at the code for user form one, when we initialize, we're looking for custom property, project number, and project name. If these values are in our file, we know that when the user form initializes, it automatically populates these text boxes for us. But if they don't, we know that we're using this number retval and name retval in order to use an if else if statement. Now, if both of them equal one, that means neither property is in the current active document. So the way that we handled this earlier when we were first working with this functionality, we sent a message to the user. We gave them an option to click the OK button. We basically warned them that the custom properties are missing, and we went ahead and we added those custom properties. Now what we really need to do here is we need to access the user form custom properties. So rather than simply just manually inputting these, we want the user to interact. We want them to enter those values. And then we want to populate this area where we had manually entered the project number and project name with whatever the user entered. So this can be a real tricky thing, interacting with multiple user forms and passing values from one user form to the next. But it's going to be pretty straightforward. I'm going to show you guys how to do it and how we can handle it. The first case that we're going to take care of is if both properties are missing. We still want to prompt the user that those values are missing, and then we want to write some code. The first thing that we need to do is show the user form. So we're going to be dealing with user form cust properties, and we're going to do dot show. So at this point in time, as the code's running, if we hop into this if loop, it'll send a message to the user. As soon as they click that OK button, it'll show the custom form, user form custom properties. And at that point in time, we'll allow the user to enter values into here, and then they're going to hit the save button. So back in user form one, we have user form custom properties. So at this point in time, we need to create something that initializes this custom properties. And we also need to do something that handles the save button. Now for the save click, all we need to do is user form cust properties dot hide. Now the reason we're doing dot hide, and I mentioned this before, is that we don't want to remove anything from memory. Now the user is going to be entering values into these text boxes. We want those values to be there. We just want to hide the form because we need to pass those values through to another user form. So we're going to create a private sub, and this is going to be user form cust properties underscore initialize. And close brackets. As soon as we do that, you see that it says end sub. Now inside here, all we need to do is we need to handle those text boxes. Now we have a save and we have our two text boxes that are located within those frames. Now we have txbx. Now txbx, we have to go back to the user form to make sure that we're getting these names right. txbx proj num add. Back to the code, it should be proj num add dot and at this point in time, we want value equals, and we want to do basically empty quotes. And we have txbx proj name add dot value equals empty. So really all we're saying is when we initialize this form, so in user form one, when we say user form cust properties show, the first thing it's going to do is run through this initialize. And after it runs through initialize, it makes sure that the two text boxes that we have are empty. Then the user can interact, they can type some stuff in, and when they hit the save button, it'll hide that form. Now if we show this form and we play it, we can hit save and we see that the form does hide. So at least that part of the functionality is working. So back in user form one, we're going to view the code. At this point in time, we have gone through user form custom properties show. Now once we show the user form and the user interacts with it, once they hide it, 
it'll hop back to this line of code. Now at this point in time, we need to use those values. Now those values are going to be the project name and project number. But as you see down here, proj name, proj num, proj name, these are things that we manually inputted into these values here. So what we need to do is declare some sort of variable that we can use in here. Now at this point in time, we're gonna say proj num, and we're gonna say proj num is equal to user form cust properties. Now, normally my user form names and, and names and things like this would be more abbreviated. Now the reason they're so long, and you guys probably won't wanna do this, but they're, they're just so long so that you guys can get an understanding of what I'm typing and what we're using. I would typically maybe use UF instead of user form and C properties or C prop. That way I don't have to type this out every time. But if you guys are wondering why I have these such long, ridiculous names, that's, that's why I'm doing it. So you guys can get an understanding of it. So at this point in time, user form dot, and we want to take the text box that we have, T, X, B, X, and we're dealing with the project number right now, proj num add dot value. All right, so what this is saying is the value of the text box in our user form, user form cust properties, that text box value is now equal to the string that we've created, proj num. Now this proj num is what gets displayed down here. It puts it in that text box value. All right, so at this point in time, we also wanna do the same thing for proj name, equals user form cust properties dot txbx proj name dot value. All right, so now that we have our user form shown, the user has interacted with it, entered some values, we take those values and we populate the string that we wanna use here. Now, very important at this point in time, we wanna say unload. I mentioned the little line of code that said unload me. At this point in time, if we do unload me, it's dealing with the current user form. What I wanna do is specify the user form I wanna unload. So user form cust properties. So this is taking that user form that we just used and it's unloading it. It's basically clearing everything from memory because we've taken those values and we've stored them in these uh, these declared strings, proj num and proj name. All right, so at that point in time, this is when the custom properties get added to our file. So we're adding project number, which in this case is no longer this value, it's now proj num, and our project name is no longer the string, it's now proj name. So theoretically, we're gonna go ahead and save this, theoretically, if these properties are missing, when we initialize this macro, it'll show our user form custom properties, it'll allow us to interact with it, when we hit save, it'll then pop those values in here. To make sure that that happens, I'm gonna go ahead and put a stop line in the code, and we can see. But first we need to go back to SOLIDWORKS and we just need to start a new file. We need to make sure that this file does not have any custom properties in it. All right, so if we go back to our code, and let's go ahead and go back to the main module, user form one show, and let's play this. All right, so we get that pop-up, it says, Warning, project name and number custom properties are missing and will be added to the active document. As Soon as we hit OK, we should see that user form. All right, so one, two, three, two, one, project name, new project. Once we hit save, can't perform request operation. That's okay because we're not done with this code, but the important thing is we want to know if those values have been saved. So if we look at here, we see proj num, one, two, three, two, one, and proj name, new project. So everything looks like it's working properly with the exception of something that failed in the code. It's possibly this line that we're trying to unload the user form, possibly because there's a space here, maybe they don't want to have a space there, whatever the case might be. We can go ahead and stop the debug, go back to our main module, and go back to our file, make sure that we delete those custom properties. So project number was added but project name was not. So there's there's something wrong with the project name line of code. So if we go back to user form one, view the code, basically it hasn't added it because we put this stop line in here. So let's go ahead and run back through the code. So I'm gonna play it, sub or function error. So it definitely needs a space here between unload and user form cust properties, but maybe there's something that is missing in the line of 
So for the time being, let's go ahead and comment this out and see if everything will run without it. So we're gonna go back to our main, make sure that we're running submain, play it, it says that we're missing both name and number. We enter a number, we enter a new project name, we hit save, and you notice that it says unsaved document because we are dealing with part one that's not currently saved, but it brings the project number in, it also brings the project name in. We can log in, log out, of course these buttons don't do anything yet, clear note doesn't do anything, but we can hide the form. All right, the important thing that we need to see is when we reload this, if those values are still there. So back in our code, let's rerun this. You notice that it brings up the same form. So even though these values are not in our file, it's not reinitializing. Let's go back to the code, back to user form one, back to the user form code, and let's rerun the initialize. So when we rerun the initialize, everything's working. So what this is telling me is that the reason it was still keeping the logged out and logged in buttons green and the, the custom properties were there is because we don't have any code that actually clears the entire project yet, which is true, we haven't gotten to that point yet. But the main problem here is that we're not able to clear or unload these values. So that is definitely a big problem. We need to be able to, uh, to clear and unload those. All right, so back to the code back to the line of code that is failing, and that's this unload. If you have some problems with a line of code, you need to make sure that everything that you're typing in is functional. So in order to do this, I'm gonna change user form custom properties. I'm gonna just change this to user form two. I'm gonna go back to user form one, and I'm gonna change this to user form two dot show, and then we're gonna do user form to unload. We're gonna save it and we're gonna rerun it. I also have to change these properties everywhere I type them. We'll stop the debug, we'll go back to main, and we'll play this through again. All right, so currently you see that it's still doing this, but that's because we haven't unloaded anything from memory yet. Instead, if we rerun user form one initialize, uh, it'll clear everything. But of course I have these notes currently in my file. I need to clear those, go back to the code, and we'll rerun initialize. All right, so both of them are missing. We run through, now this form is cleared. So I'll just enter some values, enter some random text, save. We're getting a runtime error. Let's go ahead and debug this. All right, so the runtime error is user form custom properties. I didn't change it in there as well. So I need to change it to user form 2hide So as you can see, it was a very good idea for us to make all these user forms first, but after we start typing code, when we change stuff, it can get pretty hectic. Go back again to the part file, make sure I clear all the custom properties, go back into the code, back into user form 1, and we'll rerun initialize. All right, so as we run this, we enter some numbers, we enter a project name, hit save, those values are populating. All right, so at this point in time, I'm just gonna close that form out and go back to the code and let's run it again. But before we do, of course, we have to go back to our part file. We have to clear those custom properties we added. And the thing we're looking for now is to make sure our user form has been cleared, has been unloaded. So now you can see project number and project name are gone. So there's something with the functionality of using a custom name for our user form. When we changed it to user form three, everything worked properly, but when we were using, I'm sorry, user form two, but when we were using user form, cust project name, or you know, user form, project name, project number, those, it seemed to produce an error when we we're using this unload command. So I know that was a very long roundabout way to show you guys this, but, in most cases, if you can keep them straight in your head, using user form two will potentially provide you with less errors, less headache down the road, and obviously you have to do less typing. So what I wanna do is I wanna rename all of my user forms. So we're gonna view the, view the user form, change it from user form note to user form three, and we need to make sure that we go into the code for user form three, and if we're showing the user form or we're initializing it, that we change all those values. 
I'm going to go through and I'm going to rename a lot of these and I'm going to write some of the code because when we're dealing with user form 2, project name, project number, when we're dealing with the individual project name and project number, the functionality is the same. We're just placing it at a different point in the else if statement. So you're going to be using the same bit of code except for you're only going to be dealing with project number or project name. You're still going to show the user form. You're still going to unload it. You're still going to add the custom properties. So pretty straightforward. I don't think you guys need to see it a couple more times. So I'm going to take care of that in between videos. And then when we come back, we're going to handle the note portion of it and figure out how to enter that functionality. If you guys have any questions on what you've seen here, please email SolidWorks support at mlc-cad.com and we'll see you next time.